that's Mike Leahy at BookUp.com. And as you can see, I am installing Chess Openings Wizard Professional for Windows Build 160. And this video is about the things that have been added to Build 160. The first thing to notice is if you're using a version older than January of 2022, it's now using the default data folder of Chess Openings Wizard. The older default folder was Chess Openings Wizard 2016. But this is the new 2022 format, so it uses a slightly different folder to keep your books separate. The new version, of course, has the multimedia extensions. So I'll click Next and let it start installing. Once installation is complete, it'll give me an option to run Chess Openings Wizard when it finishes. I'll do that. If it's new to you, it may offer you a couple options to copy your ebooks from your older folder, but it's already happened on this machine, so I don't see those windows. So, what I'm going to do for this is open up a new ebook so I can show off some of the new commands. Let's just call this, um, I don't know, video demo. My video demo ebook. Move it over here so you can see what I'm seeing. So in the first phase, I want to go create my repertoire, but I'll cheat. What I could normally use is a PGN file of all my games. But what I'll do here is search around for, let's go to the PGN menu and say, uh, prepare against a Leech S opponent. And the Leech S opponent that I'm going to prepare against will be me. So I can just grab my games. So down here, I can set my right white repertoire. I'll do that just for testing. I'll set it to uh, Magnus Carlsen as white. What the heck? Uh, black repertoire, I will set to Carlsen as black because I'm not going to use those right away. Here's the tricky part right here. PGN for games. I need a PGN file. And I will call it the, the uh, Mike PGM. How about that? Mike dot PGN. All right, so now we have the mic'd up PGN file set and we've checked off the option that says add games to PGN file. And I'll go get the last 100 games and I have it set here as prepare for white. So that's assuming I'm gonna prepare against this guy called Bookup. And so he'll be playing black. So I'm basically I'm gonna get my black games, 100 of them ripped off Leech S. Let's go get those now. Okay, it just completely got those games and now it's importing them into the, the repertoires, which I can ignore for right now because I only want that PGN file. So let's just give this a second. So there it opened up um, my <laughs> white repertoire as Carlson. It's showing you, you know, how I would play against Carlson, but we don't need that. What we need again is the PGN file. So we have the video demo here. I'm going to go PGN and import games and get the Mike PGN file open. And we don't need to highlight novelty since everything will be imported in this game will be a novelty. We can put the game header in the last positions comment and there won't be any duplicate comment lines because these are just games from Leeches. Okay, it read 2000 lines, imported 100 games in about 13 seconds. So this is what I've got. Uh, if somebody plays E4 against me, I play E6. Guess what happens if they play d4 against me? I play e6. Guess what happens if they play, oh, I don't know, a3 against me? I play e6. Okay, so this is obviously my repertoire played out as black. So how many leaf nodes do we think we have? Let's go to the commands menu and say find the leaf nodes. Leaf nodes, of course, are the final positions in this tree. Since this is made up of 100 unique games, I'm expecting around 100 unique leaf nodes. I could set it to find the first 200, but it'll still find the first 100. So I can find only positions without numeric assessments if I'm doing back solving, or I can find only positions without informant rate symbols also probably if I'm doing back solving. So I, I need those leaf nodes set with numeric assessments and or informant rates if I'm going to back solve well. And let it rip here for a second and find out what it's going to find. Okay, it finishes and it found, the core, it found of course, uh, 100 leaf nodes. So if I back solve now, let's take a look at, at what it thinks are the best lines or critical lines. Let's go to back solve. It warns me of what back solve is going to do to my data. And I can say, go ahead and just do that starting from the starting position of Jess. Give that a minute. 
Okay, that finishes up and it uh, processed every single position in the database and came up with 100 blank assessments and but no blank rates. The rates, the informant rate symbols are all filled in because it used the result of each game that I played on Lee Chess. So there we go. So it says here that uh, that basically I've got to work on e4 because if it plays e4, if you play e4 against me, there's at least one critical line I've not refuted. D4, evidently, I've got a critical line that nobody can beat <laughs> so far. So I wonder where that is. Uh, D4, e6, well, naturally. <laughs> and then, of course, you take a look at all the options here. So I'm actually quite doing well with uh, D4 in my 100 games. I'm winning every single line, at least by critical position. There's always one in there that I play better. Obviously, I've played a few blunders, but I've actually played good ones, so back solving says I'm always winning here as black. But is that true? What if some of these games uh, had blunders at the end? What if some of these games I was losing, but I won on time? And so I don't want to repeat that. That isn't good for back solving. So how do I fix that? Let's go to the commands menu and say we want to, uh, let me do overnight analysis. Where can we do that? Let's turn on the, the engine. So we get Stockfish 14.1 running. And then we can go to the EPD menu and say, I want to export all the positions that are leaf nodes. And I want to erase the EPD file before I'm exporting. It's going to go into position.epd in the EPD folder. And I want it to start from the starting position, not this current position I just happen to be at. And export only leaf nodes is what I want because I want to only work on the nodes at the very end. So what I'm doing here is I'm grabbing the 100 positions in the leaf nodes, basically. So the final positions in each branch of the tree. It's going to go grab those. So it wrote e uh, 100 EPD records out to this file. So now we want to analyze that guy. So we go back to the EPD menu and say, analyze with engine. And it says, which file do we want? We want the position.epd file, the only one we made. So I don't want to do deep analysis on this. I basically want to blunder check the final position of my games. So I can say instead of you know 100 million nodes, maybe just, just 1 million. And time in seconds, maybe if you just spent oh, two seconds on the position is fine. Don't need a minimum depth. So as long as it reaches a million nodes of analysis or spend at least two seconds analyzing the position, it will move on. So I'm going to call this analysis tag 14.1, two seconds. How about that? Two sec. It starts analyzing all 100 positions for about two seconds each. We'll let that cook for a bit. So this is what we call overnight analysis. It's processed all 100 positions and it's done. So let's go back in there and uh, pause the engine for a minute. So what we've done is we've uh, gone to the leaf nodes and asked the, en the engine to do analysis of them. So now we can contrast the engine analysis on the leaf nodes, the final positions of all those lines from all 100 games, to the informant symbols that were set by the result of the game. So how do we do that? That's called Find Novelties by Assessment, a very cool power tool. So it looks something like this when you set it up. So we decide that any engine score uh, above 161 centipons, if it doesn't actually say white's winning, then it's going to become a novelty. Uh, if it's not above 71 here, if it's, if it's above 71 or below, way below here, and it's not set to clear advantage for white, then it's also going to become a novelty and so on. If it's, the position is set to equals, but it's below negative 31 centipons or above positive 31 centipons, then it's going to be tagged as a novelty, similar if it's with compensation or unclear. And of course, if it's if the position is set to repetition of position, if it's anything other than zero, which is what the engines will set it to, if it's a locked up you know, repetition position, no chance for any, any advantage for either side, then we want to see that as a novelty when we see what the breakout there might be. Similar for uh, positions winning or advantage for black. So over here, we're going to name the first 100 positions in the name Novelty, and we're going to start with the number 1. And we can say, you know, find leaf nodes only. That's all we're going to look for is leaf nodes because we want to do this for back solving. If you need help with this kind of thing too, take a look at this button down here that has the eye on it for information. I've added I have new web pages to explain some of these new functions. So let's let that rip for a little while. Sure enough, on my 100 games, there were 14 that did not match up. 
Go figure. I probably won those 14 games on time. That's my guess anyway. Let's find out. So I click OK here. So I know it named these positions, so I want to use the Go menu and say Jump to Board Name. And sure enough, there are named positions leaf nodes are also named positions novelty. So there are 14 down here named from 1 to 14. Let's start with novelty 0001 to novelty 0014. Let's click on novelty 001, jump there, and let's see what we got. So in this position, uh, the engine says, A, this was a draw, equals chances 0. So maybe somebody's going to find a perpetual check here, most likely. So there's the stockfish 14-1. Uh, two second blunder check recommendation, right? And there's the assessment, zero, and it's set to zero up here. But for some reason, this game was one for black, probably because I got lucky and won on time. So I don't want this to affect my repertoire winning on time. I can't rely on that. So I need to fix this. So to fix this, I need to go change it to back to zero or back to equals. So that should actually take care of one of these guys. And then let's press the F3 function key, which I know jumps to the next position the next name position so if I go and it says jump to next name that's f3 and that's what I'm going to do I press f3 it goes to the next one so this one it says white is is really winning here crushing uh, plus 900 which means white's probably going to queen upon it looks what it looks like it looks like we have three passers here as white but somehow black won the game so that's what this position was tagged with is a black win so that's wrong that's actually a white win now we got that one fixed so what if we wanted to go fix them all automagically? There's a command for that too. Let's just go back to the starting position. Go jump to starting position. And go commands, synchronize informant symbols. That's also a new feature in build 160. So I can say if, uh, if it's not, you know, if it's winning for black, winning for white, and it's not at least 161 or better Sent upon, so positive 161 if it's winning for white, negative 161 if it's winning for black, and so on, then I want to synchronize it. So I'm going to trust the engine's assessment, and I'm going to change these informant symbols to match. Now, of course, if it's not at least 31 sent upons either way, it's going to set it to equals. All that, again, is explained in one of these custom files down here, custom help files on the web with that I button. So I'll click OK here. Watch that go through. It's processed all 100. We're good with that. So now let's try back solving and see if some of this changes. For instance, after here, we see that uh, each one of these lines is winning for black, but maybe I won them on time. And so maybe I'm not actually, my repertoire isn't so strong that I can always, always win as black here. Maybe I just got lucky and won a lot of games on time because these are blitz games on Lee Chess, right? So let's rewind and do backsolving again. Commands, backsolve. Warns me about what backsolve does, and we'll let backsolving rip one more time. So I just completed backsolving. It's gonna look through the novelties, the other ones, okay, the other name positions. So yeah, let's try again here after D4, E6. Uh, now we find out th the truth, right? <laughs> There's at least one line here where uh, white played e3 and beat me. So, um, and beat me by, I, I want to say, by creating a uh, position where it was way better for him. Positive 999, he was probably mating me, right? But I still won on time. But now that I've got it corrected, it shows me that that's actually something I need to take a look at. Like what in those lines, because more than one player has played this and both of them actually did beat me, but, but before, I mean, I say beat me again, because at the final position, they had better positions, but it was masked by the fact that, that backsolving started with the result of the game, which I won probably on time. So we want backsolving to be accurate for analysis, not how lucky I was on the clock. So there you go. That was a Cook's tour of the uh, the different functions in Build 160. The new ones, again, that you want to pay attention to have been moved around a little bit. Find leaf nodes, synchronize informant symbols to match, which I usually use for the leaf nodes so I can do back solving more appropriately, and then find novelties by assessment. So, which would jump in right to those novelties and I can actually check on them by hand rather than having them done automagically. And of course, we took a look at the back solve command 
And over here in the PGN menu, we took a look at prepare against Lee Chess opponent, which I used as a cheat to bring in my last 100 games as black. And we also looked at uh, EPD, creating a file, and uh, so export positions, and we export the positions, and then we turned on the engine and used analyze with engine. So that was a heck of a tour of Build 160, but you get an idea of what's possible for refining your repertoire and how easy it is if you've got PGN collections of your own games. If you have questions, send me an email, mike at bookupmembers.com, or look for me on the users forum. And before I let you go, if you don't have the new 2022 version, I highly recommend it, not just for these couple of power tools that have been added in late January, but for the multimedia note taking, which I think is a game changer. If you haven't watched the video about that, you should. And if you're eligible for an upgrade, get online now, log in and get that upgrade. I made it cheap, at least for a while. If you don't own Chess Openings Wizard Professional, it could be time. Yeah.